So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. And welcome from Tales from a Certain Point of View. Once again, we have, uh, thanks to Solo Wookiee, taking some time off flying through the galaxy with Hondo lately just to bring back Han Solo's ship. Solo Wookiee, give us a hi. What's happening, everybody? Good to be yeah. here. We're going to have to have him do one of those Wookiee growls one of these days. Hey, and from the 501st, still leaky as ever, leaky trooper. What's hey going guys. on? guys. Thanks for having me again. Okay, and I, oh... Uh, I am neither. Now we're not gonna get into that because Sleepy John made fun of us the last time. This is the reshoot for Obi One uh, originally it was with Sleepy John. Obviously, we Sleepy schedules uh, busy, so we brought on Leaky Trooper. Uh, you know he's a regular now. You'll see him all the time. Uh, the boys did promise uh, that I was gonna reshoot it, so we are reshooting it. The basis of the story originally was they had just announced that they were going to. Um, they were going to do the Obi-Wan show again. They started getting the writers in there. And uh, Sleepy wanted to know, he had a couple questions about what we thought storyline-wise and everything else could go there and what would kind of be maybe some things they could do with it. So we're going to go through a little bit of history of it. We're not going to do the whole history of Obi-Wan. A lot of that is already in TV or in uh, – a lot of the canonized version of it is already in TV or in uh, the Clone Wars, Rebels, whatever, following all that type of stuff. What we are going to do is fill in a couple gaps, a couple areas – and most of the stuff we're going to talk about can either be placed in the timeline uh, that we've talked about before, which, you know, is like between one BBY and, um, you know, probably like Luke and all of them around 11, 12 BBY, that type of stuff over there. So, uh, or vice versa, 12 BBY, one BBY. Yeah. Either way, between the era where uh, the twins are born and Luke, Go wants to go to get converters uh, and stuff like that. Um, where where and Obi saves him. There is uh, actually stuff in novels and stuff in comics that both kind of cover some of this area. Um, most of it's canon already. There are some points that aren't canon, and maybe it's a little bit you know like we know we you know we like to get into the fan uh, fantasy of what they're actually going to show. So when we get into the legacy stuff, we're going to kind of speak about it and, and, and tell you who we hope and who, who shows up there at the end. I think that's probably the right way to go. What do you guys think? Is that probably what we're going to do? Yeah. All right. Probably not going to be as good as the first time, but we'll try and make it the best we can. So here we go. It's going to be so, great. All right. So real quickly, one of the biggest points that we've talked about when we were asked what we thought they might do for the show is we thought that it might have to do something with um, just because of the timeline, uh, Obi-Wan's journals uh, for those that don't know. Uh, Obi-Wan journals has been mentioned a couple times in tales. Um, but the biggest and uh, most, the biggest part of it and the biggest part is revealed. And actually, uh, if you look at the previews, we just saw it's coming in a trade paperback. They're going to actually do Obi-Wan's journal as a trade paperback. We're going to go through the single issues and tell you what it was. What pro pretty much what it was, was Aaron when he was in the Star Wars run. And we've talked about Aaron before. If you haven't watched the Aaron video, go back and watch that. Um, Aaron uh, decided that he was going to do a little bit of, because there always has been lacking with Luke's training and kind of what was Obi-Wan doing in the meantime, Aaron decided that every once in a while at the end of every story arc, he was going to start filling in that kind of thing. It was just going to be like a, a second portion of the story. It wasn't going to take over the whole thing, but it was very popular at the time and it did start taking over some of the other books. So the first book that's kind of like the main book that you have to get if you're collecting the journals, in our opinion, and you can skip this one, but the one we like to always start off is this book. Now, I know a lot of people are saying Cassandra's Solo. This is still a dollar bin book, by the way. You can find it. But it, this one originally picked up because the Solo kid was in it, right? The one that was supposed to be uh, Han Solo's daughter. Um, but what it also has in it is there's a Boba Fett and Luke Skywalker storyline in there. And uh, they send Boba Fett out to try to find out this guy and because it's post uh, blowing up the Death Star. Darth Vader sends him out to try to find out this pilot that, that blew up Death Star. Who is he? What's going on with him? Where is he? And Boba Fett tracks him down to Tatooine, tracks him down to Obi-Wan's um, hut, and he actually almost blows up Obi-Wan, right, Wookie? He, like, shoots the, the cavern and blows it up in a fight or something like that. Um, yeah. But, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the more important part of this, besides a cool cool fight uh, with Boba Fett and Wait, Luke wait, that's not... That's not right timeline though. After they blow it, because because Obi One's gone. Yeah, Obi One's gone already. So it's after they blow up the yep. Yeah, after he disappears on the 
so what happens in this book is Luke Skywalker goes out, flies out to find Obi-Wan to see any guidance. He flies out to, to the shack where Obi-Wan on Tatooine used to live to try right, to find right. any guidance. Right, While and Obi-Wan that, is gone. He's not there. So if that was confusing for him. Yeah, right. So what, So And at the time, Darth Vader's like, who's this hot shot that just blew up the Death Star? And right. the by the way, the Millennium Falcon once again, because the, the story of Star Wars is truly about Han Solo who knocked uh, Darth Vader uh, a way that allowed Luke Skywalker to get a lucky shot in um, says, well, I know I can't mess with the guy in the Millennium Falcon. Let's go find this other kid who blew up the Death Star. So he sends Boba Fett there. Boba Fett and Luke Skywalker get in a little bit of a fight. And then he uses the rocket to blow up Ben's cabin. And when he does that, read the book, pretty much Luke finds the journal because it falls out. <laughs> it falls out of its hiding place. And that's the beginning of Obi-Wan's journals. After that, like I said, Aaron's like, oh, this is kind of a good idea. And I'm glad he did. So he starts getting into Obi-Wan's journals. Now, we have seven. Seven, by the way, just has so many covers. I mean, there's just so yeah. many. There's this, there's this, there's actually a sketch black and white. But and, this and one this is kind of the, the early stages and era of, of Marvel and their variants and coming out and going, hey, we could have multiple covers for the same book. And and all, all the books at this time really started to have a lot more of them. So this is one of Star Wars where they really it was it was at this time it the variants started just, you know, a, li a little while before this, but this this is when Star Wars really started hitting the variants hard. This was, yeah, this was kind of when you started going when you started going to Diamond, uh, re, you know, the Diamond Summits, and people were just killing Marvel over how many. Because I mean, variants had already been a game at that point, but like right. how many there was coming out on this. Well, and that was a trend with Marvel itself, right? Like I think all of the yeah. comic publishers started doing all these variants, right? Yeah, Marvel was really notorious, but this was kind of like the peak. This was like the last straw type era where they were just, it was getting out of control. I know people still think there's too many variants, but like <laughs> this era from one to probably about 14 or 15 in this run, it, it there was just so many variants. So anyways, I actually do really like this. And, and I'm talking like variant variants, not just like the Marvel variants, not you know, where they have an A, a B, a cover, a C cover, a D cover, E cover. Then they'd have the five, the 10, the 15. I'm not even talking about also on top of that, all the store variants, like the PGX variant that they have for this, the uh, what's their name? What's book of millions. Cause they don't call it here. It's uh second Charles, but they call it books of millions or whatever. Uh, those type of variants and everything like that. Um, but anyway, so in this one, which is seven um, once again, this is like the actual first journey story. Um, and it's kind of funny. I mean, look, uh, if you've listened to any of these, you, you know that, I think Luke's a little bit whiny uh, in this story. It runs in the Skywalker family. Right. And in this story, Luke actually tries to, now I kind of see why he might be a little whiny. He's a kid and he comes out and the huts are, um, Jabba the Hutt has organized a crime family type group and they're going out there and they're like pressuring the moisture farmers and they're kind of stealing everything. And little Luke, little Killy Luke, who's probably about seven at the time, decides he's going to talk crap to the to the hut clan, and it doesn't go well for him. He gets knocked out. Spoiler alert: they knock him out. Big surprise. Uh, but what does happen is it's kind of cool because you see the early stages of Obi Wan uh, walking through Tatooine. Uh, you see a lot of cool background stuff, and you see how they could shoot some of the TV show, like how they could say explain where. Obi Wan would be, or you could put people in the background there that that we'd like to see too. Um, you could do a lot of Easter. And, and the good part about this, and and where you're, I think you're you're great at making this point here, Marco, and bringing this up is that we're going to see, as I think, I, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen because I don't know, but it would make sense that they would did start in this realm with these journals because we're going to see flashbacks. Um, uh, of the the time before the end of the Death Star, we're going to start seeing flashbacks more than we're going to actually see a point of that time. So I, I think if if and when they do start the show, I think we're going to see small snippets of that timeline and then the flashbacks, just like this book, um, which yeah. the journal is a lot of flashback of the journal. Like yeah, because from you a timeline perspective, like that book, 
Obi-Wan still had that older Alec Guinness kind of mm -hmm. appearance, right? Mm -hmm. And I know Ewan McGregor is, you know, aged a little bit from the... So I was curious about what is the timeline so oh. actually, I'll show you. I'll show you next because we get in some of the books. He actually doesn't have that look so much. He not in these storylines because it is a little bit earlier. Like I said, you're looking at like, you know, you got to think it's like when when Luke, you know, he's it's going to be he's still a child, so seven eighteen. It's going to be around eleven and twelve BBY, right? Like mm -hmm. that's where we're looking at really here. So he's going to be so Obi's probably going to be in his fifties ish. You know, so, you know, or I mean, and that's Hewlin. Obviously, he looks really young, but you can do whatever you want. You're going to put him in in a cloak. And a lot of this, like what in this book, he ends up obviously saving a knocked out um, Luke. And once again, he has to – now this time, because in in Tales from a Certain Point of View, they do talk about how uh, he showed up and tried to help out before. And, of course, uncle and aunt were like, get away from here. Don't ever come back. We don't want you around here. Well, this time he just takes out <laughs> takes a passed out Luke and, like, throws out doorstep. Deuces, I'm out, bro. So, I mean, like, it's kind of crazy, but it's kind of cool. Like, the journals are really a good storyline. If you don't want to buy the singles, which, like I said, you can find most of them in dollar bins. Um, if you can't, then then get the trade paper back. It should be coming out soon enough. Um, it's not probably the week this airs. Probably in a couple weeks that airs. Um, after that, and this is where we're going to start seeing kind of like what you were talking about, Leaky. Um, there we go. So this is the Mayu cover. Uh, Mayu starts doing the art. Uh, I think he does it for like he, this whole arc. Um, and there's some cool covers in this as well. Um, key points. Sean to, Penn there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So for those that aren't familiar with Mayu's art, he tries to do this realistic type uh, art all the time. Uh, I've mentioned before and other ones that I like the magic or um, what's her name? The blue chick from X-Men. Uh, yeah. I like all the mystiques that he does. I don't know why I pick them up. They're not. Like none of these books are going to be valid. Well, maybe they will one day, but like I just like them because they're cool. Because um, I do like his art. Uh, and and if you haven't seen it, check out our friends and the fellow podcasters that show up a lot on this. Pete and Mike Morello did a three card Monty with Mayu. Uh, mm -hmm. Check that out on the channel. It's really good. Um, in this one, they start getting into the a little bit more of the cartel. There's actually a couple cool points in this one too. So and this is a little. First off, I'm going to start with the end of this story, and then I'm going to go to the beginning. Can the I end point out story, one thing that I don't like about this cover? Yeah, what's that? If you look at the butt of the gun and you look at the barrel of the gun, the gun's crooked. crooked. Yeah, but I think it's supposed to be shot on an angle because the cannons are cut. The can uh, he's in a cannon can canyon, and it's coming crookedly in. So, um, it got bent. Oh, geez. I mean, come on. <laughs> hey, these are cheap books anyway, so knock it off. <laughs> no, it is a great cover. I do love the cover. That's just the only thing that's ever bothered okay, me. Okay, so I'm not going to go reverse order because I'm going to bring up why he has a gun. <laughs> so the first part of it, and, and this is something you kind of have to – you're going to see where we're trying to link this up to a couple other things. Um, he actually does this little scene right here. This is in the books. He is uh, – for a Jawa crawler, he's kind of protecting um, – He's protecting the Jawas from the Tusken Raiders. He gets into this great big fight. Da, 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 they're paying him. It's weird why he's actually doing this. He's doing it to save up for parts. Uh, to help oh, Luke fix the uh, T-16 that he wrecked. That's right. He's helping Luke. Nice By the way, just, just to go back real quickly, this is Luke passed out being thrown. See, he is younger here. This is the book previously. So he is a little bit younger face. This is Luke being thrown at the doorstep. Of the uh, hut, uh, so that he doesn't get. So and, in and, these books, um, was Luke was Ben a shadowy figure that would kind of swoop in, kind of like Ultraman in the last three minutes of every episode, or was he? Not every. So in the first book, that's actually how it happened. Uh, he was. You'd see him as a cloaked figure in the background. He'd be walking through Tatooine. You could see he was ignoring everything that was going on. He actually. There's some people getting beat up, and he like walks right by it while the hut's goons are beating him up. And it wasn't until little Lukey gets all mad and starts screaming at the, the hot clan. And, and, it, and it, makes, it makes it makes a lot of problems for Ben. This yeah. is this is a key point to this whole story because we're in between, you know, BBY and and the end of Rebels. Okay, because Obi-Wan is there watching over Luke in a sense. Now 
he also understands that Order 66 has been executed. So he can't openly reveal himself. Right. And he is torn because all of this travesty is happening around him. The the Hutz clan that's stealing the water from the moisture farmers and starving out all of the families on Tatooine so that they can jack up prices. Um, the Tusken Raiders coming through and beating up on Jawas that he what Marco was talking about. And now he's defending them. And, and he's like, I, there's a travesty as a Jedi. I took an oath to protect and stop this travesty. I have to, as a Jedi step up, but it's not like I can, it's not like the clone wars. I can't just go jumping in here with my lightsaber or swinging without somebody going, Hey, uh, I got, I got Darth on speed dial. Yeah. Hey dude. There's a yeah. guy down here swinging a lightsaber around. Check this out. And taking, you know, cell phone pics. Like, hey, Darth. <laughs> you know? There's a yeah, certain yeah. necessity to be low key, and he can't, the stories can't start spreading of a Jedi in Tatooine. Exactly. Right. So the first two stories for sure that come out have to happen before even the Rebels TV show is going on, just because of how young Luke is at that point right. and what's going on. So he goes there, he tries to buy the parts once again. I mean, I don't know what's going on with Uncle and Annie Boo or whatever, but like they're not having any fun. He tries to drop the parts off. He does it secretly. All of a sudden, uh, Uncle Owen's at his front door throwing the box in his face saying, I told you to leave him alone. I mean, I don't understand. This is the one thing I don't understand about it. Obi-Wan has got to be a saint because the way Uncle Owen, who – I'm not even going to get into what Uncle Owen is and the whole grand <laughs> scheme of things and how important yeah. or not important he is or how much true blood he is or not, because that's just a whole mess up anyways. I still don't understand why somebody's like uh, out in the, the mom's kidnapped and everything else. Look, you don't come up to a Jedi that you know. Well, I guess you could, because I guess you could say like, oh, well, I'm going to turn you in, but then you turn in your son too. And plus then, well, he didn't know at the time that Vader was Anakin anyways, but whatever. Point being... He gets lippy with him again, drops a whole box on him, lightsaber falls out. Because I think, I think, yeah, it could be wrong about this. I haven't read it in a while. I think Ben put, Konobi put the, uh, put the lightsaber in the bottom of the box, uh, of parts. Um, okay, so, but after that, we'll go to the next book in the line. Because like I said, they were all arcs, so there's going to be a little bit of a number mess up. Oh, I didn't talk about what happened at the end of this book. So at the end of this book, um, there's a scene with Jabba the Hutt in it. And because... Somebody beat up all his workers. He decided to hire, hire Black Canasta. Um, we all know who he is, correct? Mm -hmm. If we don't, we'll show a picture of him real quickly in the next book because that's when he shows up next. And actually, it's really cool because you kind of get to see how Black K is like a BA, dude. Like the, the hut scene's really dope, dude. So it's a cool book to get. And then obviously, <clears throat> the next part of that is in 20 in this part of the arc um, from 15 to 20, which Aaron was saying there are arcs. I, I don't know. When you read the whole thing, I usually think of an arc as being seven to eight and telling a full story. These were kind of, I think they were getting so popular that he was just like, you know, because originally it was like eight books, seven to 15 when he did it. And after that, it's 15 to 20, but he might've been because they were, as you know, if you follow the Aaron stuff, they were about to pull him off sooner than later from the main title and put him on other things. And um, you're right. They really are almost like mini issue arcs in, in each one, and, and you're right. Can you call it an arc? It, it's like mini stories in some yeah. big story. So, so his original it, theory on it was that at the end of every arc, so at the end of every trade paperback, when they because you know Marvel was doing big into doing the trade paperback, the eight issue trade paperback, because you could sell eight issues for twenty dollars at a TPB, and people would buy it. So they were the seventh or eighth issue would always have a. Uh, Obi-Wan's journal in it. That way, every time you sold a trade paperback, you have an Obi-Wan's journal in it too. It only lasted for a couple because after that, which is this, then it goes from seven or 15 to 20, which that would be a real short one. That could have been one of the $15 ones they'd sell because they started doing that weird stuff too. If you file trade paperbacks, how they were doing stuff. I don't know, man. I can't explain Marvel in those errors. I still can't explain Marvel to this day and what they decide to do. So good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but getting back to this storyline, Obviously, uh, Black K is up there. You can see he's in the cover, so it's going to be a good issue. Um, oh, and by the way, maybe Obi had a vision, and that's why, because in this one, Obi gets a little bit of revenge uh, because Black K ends up kidnapping Owen and pimp-smacking Aunt Boo, 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 I'm messing with 
Aunt Thank Beru, you. Aunt Beru. And the pit's back in there and knocking her out. And uh, so Obi has to uh, Obi has to go out there and save Owen and, uh, and and Luke and all that type of stuff. So I think we talked to Luke. Marco about like cover art versus you know the meat of the of the of the book. I see Obi Wan has a lightsaber here, and yes. you know. I'm guessing, and I was kind of hoping this for the Obi Wan show, is that it's got to be very sparse that he loses uses the lightsaber because that's the telltale, right? And that's so exactly I what I would. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And so I, it's exactly what I was just talking about. Is yeah. just so, so this book in particular? Is this just a cover art? He's using the lightsaber to sell yeah. magazines, or does, does he pull it out in the book, which basically tells me yeah. Black Canasta has to die? So no, he get the information back. He doesn't. He, he doesn't die. Black Canasta. I'm not gonna give away this whole book because it's it's the whole book that it goes through. It's really cool. He does not die. Black Canasta actually has an arm, Vero blade, uh, chainsaw or something crazy in it, which is real cool. Read the book. That's a great question, Leaky. So I'm not gonna give it away. I will tell you this: if you want to know where he lost his eye, and this is how you kind of got to do it, because you're you're right. He's not supposed to be a Jedi and he works for Darth Vader. Well, he works for the Hutts. You know what I mean? You don't want him going all the way back. There is some force being used there. I think they use it really trickly in there. Um, and I like they do, they, they do address it in this book and it is the first time that Obi-Wan in these journals pulls out his saber. Well, I shouldn't say that. I think it's a second, but it's very, they are very far away from town and there is three people involved and Uncle Owen already knew. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, Canasta doesn't die in this book, obviously, but the famous scar that he gets on his face, this is the book that that happens from. Um, I think he's trying to use all the force he could. And eventually, I mean, eventually it just is what it is. Um, so, that's 20. The last one we have is 33, which is also a popular book because it has. Not the Bad Batch, but the knockoff Bad Batch on it. It's a really cool book. That's the first part of the story. The second part of the story has to deal with, it, it, dude, It's I actually like this part, and I wish they would have kind of kept going into this. Um, no, that's uh, what the Scar, correct? And that's yeah. The, uh -huh. yeah scar. Uh, the Scar group, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the back end, so when they do this, the OB-1 story in this one, it's a little bit different art. It's a little bit throwback-ish. Um, there is some, yeah, like this is kind of the artwork that comes from it. What happens in the storyline is they start off with this uh, little kid who is a Tuscan Raider, a small Tuscan Raider, a young kid. And he's looking for just anything, like his family's given wiped out or whatever. He goes into a bar and they're like, and they have, what's his name, the bartender in there over at Miles Eisley. And they're like, hey, we don't serve this guy, get him. And he throws him outside and the troopers obviously... I don't even know if we're allowed to do this, but whatever, read it all you want. All right. So there you go. Then obviously this is Obi-Wan in the background and he says, let him go. And Obi-Wan goes through this whole thing and they kind of talk about, yeah, I got to get him back to his people. And then they take him mask and he shows up and he pretty much goes back. And then Obi does this self-reflecting type thing on the two sons. It's really cool. It's really, um, I don't know, deep at the time, I guess. I don't know. I think it's just kind of cool because like, it's, it's it introspective. It shows that here you have this Jedi that can't reveal his Jedi. He has the torn juxta juxtaposition of being on Tatooine and protecting, but not being able to protect. And then he saves a kid and he has to do the Jedi mind trick to make mm -hmm. the stormtroopers like not really realize they're dealing with a Jedi and kind of, you know, they, they play Kate some of that. They kind of give you that instance yeah. without saying it. They kind of... Yeah, so it infers too. If you read, yes. I don't know, I don't know what solo how you felt about it, but I don't know if he was doing mind trick with him or not. It doesn't say for sure he was. It was kind of like right placating on that. It also placates earlier. Yeah. Remember, he was killing off all the Tuscan Raiders in this one. Yes, yes. But and in that one, you know, he's he's very much use, using the um uh wow mind blank Tuscan the Tuscan fighting oh jeez yeah, yeah, what are yeah, they yeah. called um. <laughs> I almost, I almost made a horrible mistake and called it a bat lift and Marco would shoot me. No, no, no. Uh, it, so you're it, right. Star Trek reference. And, so, and he, he does make sure to use that instead of his lightsaber. He does. He and, and I, 
they kind of implicate when I was reading them, it kind of seemed to me like they implicated there's a time or two where he's very much using some of that, like these aren't the droids you're looking for kind of mind Jedi trickery and, and staying hidden that way very much. It's yeah. Like I Gaffy mean, stick. Gaffy stick. That's Gaffy Gaffy stick. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So he, he does get to get, yes. So I think you're right. I think even when the black hay thing happens where he loses the eye, I think that, I mean, that's the force, but they kind of hint that maybe, maybe he wasn't using the force. Maybe he was using, you know what I mean? Like the, and the same thing with the troopers. Maybe he was using it. Maybe for you well, to read. One thing I'm hoping about the show. There's got to be subtlety, right? If they were to use the mind trick every you know week, it's you don't want it to become like the repetitive. You know, yeah, the the plot, yeah. So that's why we think a lot of these the journals will be a lot of the blueprints. Maybe we won't do it word for word, but we do think it's going to be a lot of the blueprint for it because like it's a great way to explain all that stuff and you've done it before. But some of these things we want to link back over too because I think you know as we've seen before they kind of recreate some of the legacy stuff in there too. And when that little kid, when it, I know when we started reading that little kid thing and when we saw where he was protecting the Jawas, there's a couple things that just kind of hit with us again. And for everybody who doesn't know this book, this is Star Wars number seven from the Dark Horse book. And inside that book, there's a guy named Het who leads uh, a bunch of Tusken Raiders in and he ends up uh, raiding a Jawa camp where they're trying to resell stuff like weapons and stuff like that. And he goes in there. The important part about Het isn't so was that he was originally a Jedi. He was a, a Tuscan Raider Jedi that left the Jedi order uh, to go back and help serve his Tuscan family. It's part of the Aja Singh uh, or no Aurora Singh hunt for Aurora Singh storyline later on in DK, which is a really good storyline. Um, really cool stuff happens in there. But one of the biggest parts of that is a character that we 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 know we heard a lot of people want to come back. Okay. And there's a reason why I think in our groups, we're all been excited about this guy. We all hope that he's coming back and uh, it's Hutt's kid, Hutt's kid. And his name is Aurora, Ajara Hutt. That's not what everybody knows him for, but uh, he ends up in this book, which is 10. And this is kind of like in the other books, like he could be one of these guys here. Who knows? That could be him there. You know, the guy in the blue could be him. The guy, they all look the same. But realistically, in this book, this is where we first kind of see him. And the way we can identify him from all the other huts is not only is he named, but he goes and fights the, um, you know, he uses the force. Him and his dad go on this hunt. And in the Jedi in the background is kind of telling him, like, oh, we'll get him. And he's like, no, my son. So he doesn't have a shirt on. So when he refers to him, you know it's him because he doesn't have the shirt on. You can easily identify him. He ends up using the gaff stick to go and kill him because that's what you're supposed to use, not a lightsaber. Because our buddy over here with the big head wants to tell him. And I'm not going to mispronounce that Jedi's name because it's three portions of the Oh, I do. Yeah. Uh, he, he, uh, he, he, uh, he's like, no, we'll get him with the lightsaber. And old man Het is like, nah, nah, my kid. Which is funny because old man Het's name is like, if it's Asherod Het, Sherrod Het is the old man's name. And they just put like an A and an appendix and I think an R in front of it, AR. Yeah. And it's, which is really weird how they did the names on that or Sherrod head or however you pronounce it. So anyway. I, have a, I have a head question for you. And mm -hmm. again, forgive more the newbie. No, time. Okay. So do you guys think, I, I have a feeling Disney plus might be trying to do carryover almost a combined universe between their shows. You know, we have Mandalorian, we have the Obi-Wan and mm -hmm. And I know there was just a, a, a split second in the Mandalorian we saw Tuscan Raider looking up. And I don't want to, you know, tie too many things together. Yep. But there's a lot of things, the whole Cobb Vanth thing, Cobb Vanth thing aside, you know, do you guys think there is going to be some carryover between the Obi-Wan show and this? I know they're different time frames, but I, I'm, I'm just curious if they're going to try to make these connective tissues because Filoni is notorious for that, looking at his past from – Clone Wars to Rebels. I think it was, I don't, I think, I think you're right. I think it's a nod now that we've seen more than one Tuscan Raider. I definitely think it's a nod to it. I don't yeah. think that's one of the characters. I just think it's a nod to it. And this is where we're going to kind of hit it up because this is all legacy stuff now that we got it. When we start talking about this book here, Seven, you know, it's Dark Horse. We probably should say that's legacy. That's not canon anymore. Um, but this is a character we think might come back at some point. Another one, the Obi-Wan will play perfectly well in there. Like we said, this scene is right out of the of the journals too, where they're, I mean, it's very similar. Obviously, Obi-Wan wasn't protecting him at that point. Um, 
but you did see the other Jedi at that point. That's when he ended up finding out that Het was there. Sherrod Het, the dad. And you made up, a, you just said a great point is that it's not canon anymore because of the Dark Horse stuff. So it really allows um, Filoni and those guys to take this storyline um, and twist it a little bit and play with it a little bit and rehash it, rewrite it, now make it canon, throw it in there and have a little bit of almost rewrite that timeline a little bit and make it work. And so there is a strong chance that they could take and redo some of that stuff and, and tie them together just a smidge and, and have some, like we saw in the trailer with the Tuscan Raiders on top of the, um, the Bantha in that clip as the razor crest is flying over it, it yep. very much and, and good on Disney. If that's what you're doing, that's genius. That's smart. Yes. When you tie things together like that, it continues to bring your audience into continuity and help transition them into the next one. So that's, that's a great point you just made. Yeah. Michael, on, let's, on that. let's face it, Wookie. Let's face it, guys. There's only so many things you can do on Tatooine. It's a, it's a desert planet. The, the Tusken Raiders and the Jawas are going to have to play a role. Um, there's, you know, it's kind of, there's only a few settlements. So man, it, it'd almost be crazy not to tap into these, these old stories and reimagine them. And yeah. you know, what would be good here too. I know you have the handwritten like thing over at low bricks. You're doing the panoramic of it, like perfectly show that map. That'd be great right here. So that we can kind of see, you got the dead sea. We know that that's kind of the Cobb Vance thing. You know, we've got two, uh, we got Mose Isley and Mose, whatever the other cantina Mose is. Isley. Yeah. I mean, we kind of know where it is. It's not a lot of span that they've used. And by the way, we've this isn't something we're like just spitballing and throwing us the wall, right? We've seen this before. Thrawn yes. is a perfect example. One of my favorite characters too. Thrawn is a perfect example of this. Yes, I did like the original trilogy, but there it was flawed. Just like this storyline is a little bit flawed too when yeah. you start getting for the hunt for Sing and all. But what they ended up doing, and it was Dave who did it too, by the way. Uh, I don't know if Dave's got anything going on with the Mandalorian or any other show that comes on Disney plus, but fine. so they've done it before. They kind of put the storyline down there before of how you can bring these things in here. And it would be very smart of them to have Dave as an overviewer in this. We know that that's like, he's kind of being told yeah, to do. Deborah Chow, one of the directors from Mandalorian, she was kind of brought in. I don't know if she's the showrunner or creative. I would almost think she had to be around the Mandalorian because they wanted one creatively the whole volume and technically they wanted her to get up to speed but also i think from a, a writer's room storytelling perspective they're going to want to have some they're starting a new era of star wars now so they want these things to tie you know i think that's kind of fallen down we've had these conversations before and, and mike and everybody else we've had them sleepy too that's kind of how we see it like whenever we discuss this it's always like a formula like look we needed dave to get the experience if, if you guys haven't watched it, we do have that Dave thing. Sorry about how bad it it was just well, the first thing we shot. So we had voice problems and everything else in it. But like if you could suck through it, like there's a lot of us explaining this. Like if you look at how what they did with John to bring him in so he could get the TV thing, but then you also had Dave so that he could get the live action stuff. And if you start looking at the model, it seems that they're going to do. You're right with Chow. Now you move around to a different project. Now you can keep expanding it because like the expanded universe – and I'm not talking about legacies, but I'm talking like the true expansion of the universe all the way to the outer room, to the unknown regions. There's so much you can cover and there's so much you can bring back. As you're talking, I mean, there are stories happening in 7,000 BBY and they can go all the way up past that, right? So like there's so much that you can bring in and bring back that, I mean, there, you're going to need more people to do it. And I think that's a very valid point with what you brought up. Leaky is like, yeah. She obviously have got to be interconnecting, and it's tough to interconnect it, even with the story group. But you have to have consistency across of it, and yeah. that, and that is what happened. And I don't think people give it enough credit. In the old version, with a lot of the legacy stuff, they didn't have that consistency going across as well. So they couldn't write stories. They chose caution over creating better content. Yes. And now I think we can. I think with the new model, we can we can do it a little bit more. So well, let's talk. It's familiar. And there's subtlety, right? That's I. That's again. I, I I always come across as like I'm I'm a felony, you know, you know, felony uh, deep geek. But it, it it's true when you have an audience, especially a younger audience, you need familiar, not just tropes, 
but characters. You need that kind of consistency across properties or it, you know, people lose the connection to it. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And this is, so this is how far the gap is too. So with this character, uh, we're going to talk a little, we're going to fast forward a little bit, a couple of years because uh, after comics where he kind of shows up again, and we're not actually going to show what he turns into, but we're going to show another storyline, which is something they gapped off, but really would really would have been able to come back a little bit. They did some training in the hunt for Singh. And then after that, all the way over to legacy, like it goes all the way down to legacy, which was a couple of years later, they start telling the storyline of how he runs into Oh, Obi-Wan, and look at there, another arm cut off. This is like, <laughs> how many arms do we cut off in Star Wars? We cut off arms with sabers on it all the time, man. But, there, you know, there's like... And, and Obi-Wan especially, like, that's his, that's my speciality. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> oh, you didn't want that arm, did you? Yeah. Oh, I love that yeah. particular view, though, because it almost looks like he force pushes the arm off. I know he probably got him with the saber, but... <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like he's in a bar and he's chopping off a blaster hand or something. But you've got like blaster hand being chopped off. You've got Het's hand being chopped off. You've got you've got uh, Luke's hand being chopped off. Everybody yeah, hands he's, it. He's always chopping. You know, Grievous lost several of his arms. Yeah, so it was, everybody loses a hand in Star Wars. So yeah, you get this epic battle, and then he's like one. You know, he's got two lightsabers. He ends up losing a hand, and he kind of converts then to the. You know, he's on his way to become part of the dark side. And, and the character that, that he really turns into and could really open it up and really be cool. And I think all of you know this. And the reason why we're showing this legacy book first and not one is because this would probably be in it and one won't. But if you end up putting this character in there, then legacy one, which we all know is going to be pretty, pretty, it's already a pretty popular book. And this is maybe one of the reasons why that book is becoming more and more expensive. I mean, it always was because it's, uh, what's his name? Did the cover on it and everything else. And it had the red tweak in who everybody loves that chick. Um, but the red twilight twilight seems twilight, to be yeah, huge for that that cover but whatever yeah but i mean like after that you got good artists on you got whatever but the main character that actually is there is this guy right here and that's darth crate and darth crate is asherad het that's who it is before he becomes darth crate before he gets his arm cut off because he does get cocky in terms of the dark side and then he turns into darth crate and how great would it be for Obi-Wan, which we think is only going to be one season, to do the storyline, you come up and it feeds into – because we know already they've been talking about this. They want these seasons to feed into other seasons of yes. different characters to the build off character. different characters. We, ha yep. we haven't got a good Darth. Actually, there's something that we are probably going to uh, go over in a little bit because there's a there might be a new Darth that we just have coming up. We just have to double check some stuff that we don't want to say anything about it before just because we don't want to get everybody riled up about it. But we do need some more Dars, right? We we need more Dars to come back. We well, really do. And, and it's it's not that we need more Dars because we have a ton of Dars. It's it's we need more Dars to come into the storylines because they're already in existence and a lot of fanfare for a lot of them, but they're in other things. They're in the video games, they're in the comic books, they're in the, you know, the other um Placations of of Star Wars lore, they just haven't brought them to the forefront of, of movies or TV shows yet, and, yep. and so at some point we have to see them. Is the only logical answer. Two, and I'll say this: you know, we had to reshoot the Obi Wan, but I know another one you guys are always asking me about is to give the Darth history because everybody knows the rule of two. But the real the rule of two, as far as Sith lords and so, as far as the Sith experience isn't that very it's not very long it's a very short period of time throughout history the the, the, the darth lords have some the 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 one sith the sith kingdom all that stuff was a lot longer and went on for a lot more than the rule of two the rule of two is very short and i think they're even shortening it because if what's happening what's about to come up which i think it is um and like i said we'll make a video for it uh it's probably not going to come out for another three or four weeks uh, because we don't want to jump the shark on it. But like, if I think what they're going to do is what they're doing, they're showing us that they're going to, the rule of two is going to be done. We're not going to do any more rule of two, which I'm fine with. Like, because if you've ever read a lot of that stuff, like the rule of two didn't make much sense anyways. How they try yeah. to explain it in a lot of those videos, that rule of two thing, there's always, because there's like, I mean, oh, there's rule of two, but somehow Darth Maul is running around. So he's a Sith Lord, but he's not the, the apprentice anymore. So he's not technically, 
Like that stuff doesn't make sense. The Duke uh, the, then you have Duke Aja and think, Grievous and Aja running around at the same time. By the time. way, the, the Emperor knew the whole time was being trained in Dark Side of the Force. Yeah, and the Emperor. Even yeah, even that, the Emperor at one point was training a bunch of other dark Sith Lords to take over for Darth Vader. Yeah. So well, how's that the rule of two? You know what I mean? Like it's just really shaky. So I think if they can get away from that, because it was starting to go down that part where it was getting back into the legacy area where it was really becoming gray. I think if they can clarify some of this stuff, and I think Darth Crate is a perfect example for that. Cause you know, once you start getting crate, you can start rebuilding something like the, the the Sith Empire or the Sith rule, you know, Sith One rule, like that type of stuff where it's like there's a bunch of lords underneath them and everything like that. And, we, and we what, probably, a better, what a better way than than an Obi Wan um, year long, you know, make it twelve episodes, fifteen episodes, make it more than just your eight episodes, and you can tie Mando in. You could bring in um, Aura Singh as the bounty hunter and tie that in as well. You could uh, there's so you could bring in the the uh, I always forget her name the the dark woman. Uh, yeah, that trains um, who ends up becoming crate uh, Ra Ra G Arashid I even had a hard time when I was reading Good, Arashid, Arashid. because his dad's the same and his is AR. Um, so, you guys think, think there's two? There's one of two ways they can go, and that's why I liked earlier when you were talking about the journals. There's one way they could go where it's like one story, like one arc. Right. And I and I personally hope they don't do that. I hope it's not just an eight episode, you know, pick a point in time and Obi-Wan's life when Luke's a little kid or something like that. I'd much rather have it like the tales of Obi-Wan or journals where mm -hmm. it spans across that entire, you know, uh, 17 years of mm -hmm. Luke's existence. And they they touch on little pieces of it so you can get all the stories in. And I think from what we've seen with the storytelling at Disney plus, I think it's more likely to lean in that direction of multiple stories, maybe with one arc, like a journal type thing that kind of bookends it. So I, I think it's like this, you see a lot of like, you see a lot of the stuff being mashed together in a lot of other areas. Like you're going to see, you know, the Cobb Vant thing was originally taking off of a dark horse character that ended up stealing. We've talked about it before who ended up stealing a Bubba Fett's thing. Now they changed him around and turned him in Cobb Vance um, and kind of modified him a little bit there. Like I said, we did the Thrawn thing again. Like it's very awkwardly similar how this scene in an actual Marvel book and what has happened over here is, is similar to each other. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. very, it's very, you could easily combine those. So like if you do, and I do think, you know, the episode thing where they did Mandalorian 2, I think you're going to see another eight for three or maybe 10 because they can arc that out better how they do it. But I think when they're going to do a one shot, it probably is going to be a 12 to 14. And if you do a 12 to 14, you can extend, you can go through there. I mean, that's going to be part of it. How many are they going to come out with? If they tell us it's 12, I think it's a very big possibility that they are going to combine the two stories of, because you can fit, you can fit part of Outlander, part of legacy into the journals. You can, you can, you can really, it really fits nicely in there and it makes a lot of sense. And we and know like what we were saying earlier, being able to go back and forth in memories, showing his, yes. his real line timeline, but going back and showing memories will yes. really allow a lot of that flexibility that they need to rewrite some of that story. Yes. And then, you know what I mean? Like they could go back and say, because we know Aaron likes to do a lot of this too, because if you watch the Aaron video, he does a lot of this where he drops something because he clarified it with a group. And then years later, he pops it back out. Like when the Lando book where he did some stuff there and then it pops out in like Star Wars 25 or somewhere around there. Like he, he's been known for dropping these little Easter eggs and stuff and coming back. Like how cool would it be if he actually dropped this in the Easter egg and how cool if the little kid that there that, um, I should have taken the picture, but you couldn't get a clean picture of it at all. So I, I really couldn't cut it out. But how cool if the little kid Obi-Wan was talking about here when he's young, they end up clarifying that that's eventually going to be Ashad, uh, Ashard Het. Mm -hmm. Gets a little fight with that. And then Ashard Het goes back. And then Ashard Het has flashbacks for a season. Then they do a specialty on him. And he has flashbacks about the Aja and why he's homeless at that. Why he's a teenager at that point is because his dad was killed by Singh. Yeah. And then you have the Singh flashback because we know that's still an open-ended story 
out of also the Beckett comic book, but also uh, the Han Solo movie that they've left open ended, and people are screaming for that, just like they're screaming for the end of the Darth Maul stuff. I mean, like, don't don't get it twisted. They know what's going on. They hear this all the time. They're fan. That's the coolest part about it. Like, mm-hmm. nothing to knock Lucas, man, because you know it is what it is. But I'm, I know he likes it because it's his baby. But like, how much of a fan is he though? Like, right. you know. It's right. crazy that fans are good at what they're doing and they're actual fans of this where they're like, man, we we get it. Like, we're going to hold this back, but we're going to give it to you. We just have to give it to you right. Like, I think yeah. I think that's like the best part about Star Wars in this era. Like, I, every time they keep coming up with something, I've given up on the, like, doubting what they're going to do, right? right. Like, I've, that's well, long which, past. Hey, Marco, which makes a lot of sense thematically from what they're, where they're going forward with Disney+. Plus. Obi-Wan is the first of many shows, right? It would be an absolute crime not to use the Obi Wan of the uh, one off of introducing new characters that they can cross over into new shows, right? Like Het, and and it's new characters, but it's old to the comic book fans, to the other Star Wars fans, like Thrawn, right? It's like yeah. you know, this is an awesome opportunity in this one series. You have Obi Wan, you got Ewan McGregor, you got your star power. Now bring in these new characters, introduce them and get the fans of this show to love them and bring them into new shows. And and I wouldn't say they would do that, except for they've been known to do it now. Like, yes. if you want to, yeah. like hey, look, man, we're, look, as we always say, we have no inside information. This is kind of just what we want, but like, oh, yeah. it's also kind of like what we've seen in the past them do. And it's really, it for it. Yeah. No, it is really cool. And it's, and it's like, I, like I said before, at the risk of repeating myself repeatedly, it, it's it really makes this easy to open so many different avenues. If you open part of the pro, part of the pretense problem with you know the the prequels and things like that is they they really set themselves in such a tight knit timeline and fine line of what they could and couldn't do. Doing something like this opens many avenues. If they don't feel that the avenue is working out. Um, they can take a different direction with an Obi Wan storyline like this. They really open ten to twenty different avenues of stories that they can follow from that. Yes. So yes. It, it gives them an open, wide range of everything from Thrawn to, I mean, Yoda to Darth Maul to. Aja Ventress to Aura Singh to, I mean, the, the avenues there are wide open. Yeah. Yeah. Think about, think about this though. If you go this route and this is why I kind of think they might go this route. You get two characters that you can play off now. Black Canasta, who we know like was at Vader three. And then all of a sudden you got the alpha book after mm-hmm. that. It's Alpha's book four, I think. So you got black Canasta, which opens up the alpha stuff. So you get Dr. Afro, which, you know Afro has got to be coming eventually. Yep. So you introduce him here, which like they did in comics, they introduced him first, and then they yep. introduced Afro after him. You, you introduce him first. There you go. Now you got an Afro show. You already got a, a villainous guy. We already know already. He's got the scar. We know where he got the scar from. Great, cool. But that's only part of the story because that you that you can't make a whole 12 or – you can't even make eight episodes out of that. Like you can't make eight episodes of that because his arc can't end. You can't end Black Canasta's arc in that, right? Right. So then what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to have another villain or something like that. And sure, I mean, you can f- fight sand people and whatever from here or there till tomorrow. And you can run from the huts. But like how boring would that be? You actually have to have some type of conflict and some type of villainous thing. All of a sudden you get a storyline of like maybe instead of having a dad named Sherrod and a son named Asherod, you just have Asherod Hutt. Like, yeah. Yeah. I never watched yeah. that until I yeah. talked about that, but why do you have a dad with the same name? And you just become he becomes a Tuscan Raider that somehow has got this, and then you do the backstory on him. Well, actually, had a dad or whatever, and you you could sell. I mean, that's that's like three seasons in itself. A Tuscan yeah, Raider. and I think I think to the audience out there, this would be brand new. It's kind of like mining something. Like Tuscan Raiders were always kind of side characters in the background, but if you make a villain that has some force ties to it out of the Tuscan Raiders. That everybody's gonna think, oh, that's genius. It's something brand new we've never seen before to your kid yeah. audience in Disney Plus, you know. Yeah, I mean, tell tell a lot of those kids that were watching Rebels and loved Rebels and stuff, Thrawn, the original Thrawn trilogy, they don't know it. 
you know, that's why when they, that's why when that Thrawn book came out, the comics, I think it did so well. I think it did so well, not because, you know, the, the one, the one in 50 or 125 or whatever it was that good is because there's a lot of people who never read into the leg, old legacy stuff. They never did that, but they had known it for, they knew him from the rebels thing. That black series Thrawn that came out where it has him in, it doesn't have him back in, in, in the original Thrawn trilogy. It has him in the current timeline of the rebels and that set sold out right away. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, like, yeah. and it's big money, dude. So you yeah. can't tell me that's like the old time guys like us that were going after that, the legacy guys. It wasn't. There was a lot of new people going after that. People who yes. watched that show stuff. I think that, and I think that's to your guys' point. What you're saying is like, you can reinvent these characters. And sure, for us, how can we be mad? We're getting our old stuff back. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what I was just here. That's what I was just going to also uh, say as well is that we can tell this story with all these different new avenues opened, all these different new characters, all of this different, but the best part of it is in the end we know what happens and they don't have to tell that story it was very much like when they did rogue one and rogue one literally took us right into the very opening scene of a new hope yes. now this story would very much allow us the overlay in that continuity of okay now we know what that little gap that it fills in that little gap of, Oh, okay. Now Luke's big enough. He's met Obi-Wan. He goes, Oh, are you, you know, crazy, crazy old wizard in the desert, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, and you know, you can take it and pick it up from there and you already know what happens. So they don't have to even worry about telling the ending of that story because it's already been done. Yes. You're just filling in this little gap. So, yeah. It really could placate to another, oh, I get it now, kind of feeling like, I, I don't know about the rest of our community or anything, but when I saw, and I mean, I had kind of already known, but when I saw that that turn of events into, uh, from what, Rogue One into A New Hope and the way that played out, it resonated with a lot of people. I'll give an example. My sister and my nephews went and saw it with me, and I kind of already knew what was going to happen, what the storyline was, um, you know, being a, a Star Wars aficionado, geek, nerd, deep diver, whatever you want to call it, and getting involved. But when that storyline fed right into A New Hope, I could see it click. In, in, in my sister and my nephews and we had a great time at the theater and they went and, and you could see the light go I get it this is what they were talking about many Bothans died to give us this information and and yeah. that and then when that clicked so their ability to be able to tell this story and then bring that click back to the audience again the kids who who will be familiar with the original the so right wookie look at the last the lost the final season of clone wars how it clicked right into revenge of the sith right man they're yeah they're go with what works well this is the thing that that and because you brought up rogue one like that you don't even you may you didn't mention but we'll click it again lost stars the novel they released that novel and that literally is the lead up to rogue one like they gave mm -hmm. you print of what was going to happen in Rogue One. Same characters, told you about the dad, told you about Kirk, told you about everybody in there, told you pretty much it was going to be a movie, gave it to you. Nobody thought much about that book. You know what I mean? Like, nobody yeah. thought much about that book. And then all of a sudden, it's like, because as soon as I as soon as soon I got into the screen and saw the first incident where they're on the farm, I was like, oh, now I, now I realize why that book was, like, the book was okay, but, like, you kind of were like, wait, there's got to be more. And they didn't come out like for a year, I think. They didn't come out with another book or anything about it. And then all of a sudden, Rogue One shows up and you're like, oh, this was, you were just leading us up to, <laughs> you already have the finish too. So you're just book ending the pieces between. Yes. And, and maybe that's too much reading into stuff, but they've done enough to us now at this point where it's like, yeah, right. Obi-Wan's journals and the legacy stuff is book ending us into an area where we can see the start and finish. We don't care. We just want the inner thing. And it's worked well for Disney and Star Wars at this point. Mm -hmm. Then why wouldn't they keep doing it? That method has worked. Absolutely. Yep.
Yeah, uh, they're fans of all media, right? I mean, we see that right. with Pony. You know. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, you satisfy so many cross references. You can't the, the the visual people that only watch movies or TV shows, the people that do the deep dives, that want everything done, that read all the novels, and then even just the ones that are briefly going over, listening to things like this or whatever, and just trying to figure out what's going to happen next. Like, it gets you all the fan bases and gets them excited. I think probably when you look back at it, now that I'm thinking about, it, that may have been one of the failures for the solo show. Like, they may they should have probably done a Beckett and sing thing ahead of time so that you got that out of the way and then all of a sudden you used it as an easter egg in the book too and then all of a sudden now we're getting the rest like something to feed it in softly like you don't have to give hard cells all the time like you can softly feed stuff in every once in a while then you get the back of character as a background now all of a sudden he shows up in a movie you're familiar the deep dive people are already familiar with that guy you so know what i mean that brings up a question i have like now that the books have changed and they've gone from the dark horse into this new, these new books, right? Mm -hmm. Are we seeing kind of hints of that in the new books, in the new, you know, the more of the IDW, um, uh, more Disney books? Are we seeing them mine some of the old stuff? Like, I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. I mean, like, so like, obviously there's the direct references where they've taken people or they took the one series that was Dark Horse, which we all know because we always talk about it. So that's Mirror and pulled it over and they used a lot of those guys and they just re-imaged like Rook and them type of stuff. But you see like when they did Cobb Vance in the novels and a couple other things that they took the Boba Fett stuff over there. They took the character that originally it was because we all know my favorite scene for there where Boba comes in. That's a Dark Horse comment in the twin engine, destruction of twin engines where Boba Fett's got the gun to the back of his head and says like, oh, but I'm going to take you out. He doesn't. Then they end up, he ends up paralyzing him in that whole story. Like you see that coming over. They're just remodifying how they're doing it. It was the same thing with like air. The empire became, it was a, it was a comic and it was a novel. And then they brought it right over and they redid it in the Marvel version of it. Um, you redid some of the clone war stuff and how, how they redid uh, some of the characters in that, you know, like they were hinting at like echoes and that type of stuff, but they actually brought it over. Even though the show is canon, they had to figure out some of the stuff from over there. Yeah. They've been going back and remining some of these stuff and, and reiterating it and retouching it up. Not only, I mean, we saw it. That's one of the things Dave did in both rebels and towards the end of clone wars. After the first couple of seasons of clone wars, you saw him start tailoring stuff and turning it around like the whole thing about the civil wars. You know, we've always talked about the civil wars and the, uh, occupation of mandalorian like that's all stuff that they took out of there and redid it and now there's a thousand civil wars and a thousand invasions or whatever what the heck do they call that sieges sieges of mandalore but like taking it <coughs> over there like when you see the death watch like we've seen it in mandalore too the death watch wasn't always about the death watch that you saw originally in clone wars because originally when you go all the way back to joker and all those guys that were or jester and all those guys that were were in like open season and that type of stuff over there they were there was a force that was going to other planets and saving Mandalorians while they were being under attack and trying to form like a Mandalorian thing where it wasn't, I mean, I guess it's a big de debate with Jango Fett and Bubba, right? Like, are they really Mandalorians? Well, and what the Mandalorian that's, that's a story for another time. <laughs> that is, that is the hole. We don't want to start going down. <laughs> but I mean, that's kind of what we're, that's kind of what we're saying over. That's kind of what we're saying now. Like it's the, so that question that was answered, obviously uh, we're not going to get into, but like with the Mandalorian is the Mandalorian, a true Mandalorian. Did he come from one of the Mandalorian systems and more so was he a ma of Mandalorian blood? You know what I mean? Like they, so they do, they rehash these questions all the time. So now he can't take off his helmet. Is that because, they would know that he wasn't a Mandalorian. Is that because who knows why he can't take off his helmet? Because it's you know? funny, there was a fear, right? I think when they first announced Legends that they were banishing all of the book characters or the comic book characters to a graveyard where never to be seen again so they could mine, not mine, but create new stories and have a whole blank slate. But I think we've seen a precedent now that they are mining these characters that were Legends, reimagining them. So it's kind of not put the constraints on kind of poor storytelling in the past but really cool characters like Thrawn. yeah i think there's a i think there's a bunch of guys i'm just gonna say guys because they were mainly guys that probably owe some apologies out there because of what they were saying and doing about that type of stuff like hey look i wasn't happy when the legacy got got killed off but what they were using the excuse of what they were doing in the star wars uh and i'm also not gonna get into that either but what they were saying wasn't right 
they didn't wait and they were trying to use it for a, a pulpit for something else and they were completely wrong they, and, and, and they've done really great stuff with it uh, yeah. and they brought back a lot of our favorite characters and done them justice I don't know one character that they've brought back that they haven't done justice to or one that they haven't actually added on to um, and done justice to like increase the value of that uh, I'm just trying to think. I'm really. I, I think that they'll. I think that's a big part of the whole Obi Wan one season. I don't see. I mean, you can't take a major character like Obi Wan and come to the table and say, "I want to do a one season shot of Obi Wan and not bring your A game." Disney is not going to sit here and go, I'm going to let you have the rights and ability to write and make a, a TV show of a, an A-list character. I'm not talking, we're talking one of the originals, the 77, yes. one of the, you're talking one of the biggest characters of all of Star Wars. Other than, I mean, other than 3PO and R2-D2, I don't know that there is another character that shows up as much and as they have Obi-Wan and, and the two droids. So they're not going to give you an A-list character like that and let you not do, do it justice. Yeah. Or not use it to leverage as a launch off point to new things. It's not just going to be him reflective in the desert fighting Jawas and Tusken Raiders. Wait, wasn't he only in two movies? Because he was the ghost in one. He was the <laughs> no, well, no, not necessarily. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking a Fools fan. I'm talking not just Alec Guinness. I'm also talking McGregor and, and yeah, and, no, I get you. yeah, no, no, and I get it. But like, think about this: like, they need to get back to solid movie making, right? Like, we need that, right? Yeah. And originally, one of the titles that was supposed to be. If you start doing the training ground like it is, so they don't screw it up again, you're you can do it where your training ground becomes new characters like Mando. Because you can say what you want, that's a new character. You start to get them established. You worked out an arc system. You can do that. Mando can't go forever, right? Right. You know, we're looking maybe four seasons, maybe five. Like this isn't a sitcom. You can't right. have it. You know, this ain't Seinfeld. It ain't going on that long, bro. This ain't uh, this ain't Mash. You ain't gonna make it thirteen seasons. <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, in fact, way, congratulations, uh, right. congratulations. He Matt, said uh, he wants to use it, make it his Game of Thrones, right? He wants to expand the universe. Right. And you know they're going to do the same thing with Obi Wan. Well, gonna... they also, I mean, Disney also wants to make stuff last a thousand, you know, they want to make it a thousand years long past after they pass away. They want to keep going on. And the way you do that is you start getting all the way into the unknown regions, you start retelling stories. I get it back. L luckily, there's enough gapping that they can do this type of stuff. But for some of these key characters like Obi Wan and Darth Maul, there is small windows where they have to where they can finish it off. But if you can use those popular characters to build up new characters that people feel yes. familiar with, even if it's just like a background type thing, even if it's in one or two episodes, yep. but people want to know more. I mean, we talk about it. The Darth, right? They need new good guys and they need new bad guys. You know, the one thing about Star Wars that's always funny, and I was talking to somebody about this because because uh, of something else that we're, like I said, we're working on is, um, you know, people fall in love with the either throwaway characters or the Darths. Like, they always do. Man, they always do. Like, yeah, I mean, people give Obi-Wan love, but if people are going to be Obi-Wan or Darth Maul, Darth Maul was thrown down a shaft and cut in half. But hey. You'll see more Darth Mauls than you will Obi Wan's. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, now it's a little bit different, but like the same thing. Like, how many people are Vader? People love Vader, man. People yeah. love Vader. They'll always love Vader. People, people love Boba Fett, and he's got what the least amount of screen time yeah. anybody in the entire, you know, EU or any or whatever you want to call it. And then, I mean, when Captain you... Phasma, Captain Phasma was huge. Everyone was like, "That chick is." awesome with the chrome trooper suit no way this is gonna be awesome boom killed her off yeah. everyone was like really again that's the only one i'm disappointed in because the, the the rest of the story for phasma besides cardinal who i i really like the cardinal character they that's the one novel where i'm like oh yeah like they did her so wrong on so many levels they didn't do well in the novel with her they didn't do well no when the movie's with her, they really... Future opportunity, right? Get better creative talent, 
My yeah, to kill people off too quickly because especially if it's non bring backable or whatever, how yeah. do you work through that? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you start looking at some of those, like honestly, Han Solo, if you know the story, uh, Han Solo, uh, Harrison Ford even thought he was out of the, the three was the most expendable. That's where the whole line of like kill me off comes. It wasn't kill me off so I can go shoot Indiana Jones. He's already shooting Indiana Jones. It was kill me off because he thought he was the most expendable at the time and he didn't know the line, Luke, I'm your father. So like, that's where that all comes from. Mm -hmm. And it's the truth. And honestly, in my opinion, Han Solo is the best out of the three. It's really easy to rank the three. Han Solo, Leia, and then Whiny. Um, <laughs> but hey. Whiny <laughs> Smurf. You know, I mean, I mean, it, th but this is it too. They've made that character better too uh, with these stories, the journals and everything else. They've made yeah. Luke a lot better. And I've read the old yeah. stuff. And he wasn't much better there. There were some weird things they were doing with him. Um, and I think they've done a really good job across all the platforms coming back. So I know I was, I, I wasn't one that was hugely excited that they were doing things. I was kind of like, Oh, let's see how this turns out. But I also wasn't one that was trying to stand on a soapbox and tell everybody not my Star Wars. So, like, you know, I think a couple of those people out there had other agendas. But to be honest with you, I, I don't know what you guys think, but I think they're doing a great job. I mean, look, uh, you're wearing uh, the child shirt. I, I got the uh, Pops Boba Fett remake still on, which is a new shirt because they're still doing more stuff on him. What do we got? Go ahead. Che Chewbacca holding oh, the skateboard. Chewbacca. You know. oh, yeah. Well, he's just timeless, man. And not to mention that, I was trying to flick your 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 on, but you know he's still around too. That Chewbacca thing. When you look at it, Hondo and Chewbacca, they're huge in Black Sphere, right? They're keeping him around. They got him down at the Galaxies of Edge. He's all over the place with that. He's taking over the Millennium Falcon. Like those are things that are great because the old. We're not gonna get into the, what happened to old Chewbacca, but like, hey, listen, man. I mean, it, it, <laughs> don't even bring it up, man. That didn't happen. Chewbacca could be nine hundred years. He could live to nine hundred years. He could. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the old what happened to old Chewbacca wasn't great. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, the reason, there, it didn't happen, it right? Didn't happen. So I think I think for the most part we we can be happy with it. I mean, we can be happy with what they're doing and what they're bringing back. And like I know a lot of people are out there like, oh, they got to bring back the video game guys. But really, the honestly, with the video game guys, it was rough. You will maybe we should do a history to explain what what about those video game guys? Because even when they were trying to explain those video game guys, you got to think. You had Raven, who was technically Ravencrest. They didn't even mention his name for a ton. And Ravencrest is actually technically the name of the group, not the actual person, kind of. And like, they didn't include that story. Was had th those stories had nothing to do with Raven or Malik or the whole any of that. It, it, they all those stories had to deal with some some a Jedi Padawan who will kept. We'll get into some other time, like. Right give on. us stories, like give us cross, like actual cross stories, not just like, yeah. oh, we're going to put a like scene with one guy in a hood and say yeah. that's who it is. And yeah. it's so tie, cool. Tie it true. all back together again. Yeah. Just, I but mean, give it us words, words, don't, don't change it. So the gym here's, is, uh, here's one, on a one final question I had about Obi-Wan. Speaking of the cross stories and tying it together, do you think this Obi-Wan and these scripts that they wrote, were tied at all when they were talking about making him like one of the Star Wars stories, like Rogue One or Solo, or did they kind of throw that book out when Solo kind of tanked? Is this an all new Obi Wan, all new? And that's what I'm hoping, and that's what I think. But I, I'm curious what you guys think. What do you think, Solo? Because I'll tell you what I think. So, okay, let me think. All right, so four, five years ago. Um, I did a big trip through California, um, with some friends, special occasion. And we went camping all along the coast of California from top to bottom. Anyway, ran into a guy on a tour and he worked for, um, ILM at the time. Now, originally there was a, in talking to him and everything, there was an idea brought to the table. They had not announced it yet. They had not blah, blah, blah. And they said, look, we're talking about doing uh, individual shows. And originally they had talked about doing an Obi-Wan story and a Yoda story. 
And here we are many years down the road. And um, it was great. I can't remember the guy's name, but if you're watching this, you're awesome. And thank you for talking to me. <laughs> and I talked to him and I talked his ear off. And later on, here we are down the road with Mando, and now they're revisiting the single Obi-Wan line story. So years ago, they had already talked about doing individual stories and doing episodes or one movie. Um, they tried Solo, which, as we all know, didn't go over that well. And that's when they really changed their direction and said, okay, let's try series and kind of stretch it out and give a little more content because the movie quick thing doesn't really work with our fans. And, and so it, a long time ago, they had this idea and now we're starting to see after the, after, and this was right before Disney had purchased and blah, blah, blah. So now they're, they're really expanding and have found the team to do it. So I think it's two parts. I think this is how it works. One, does the failure of uh, the solo movie had a lot to do with it. Number two, there's a lot of stuff that's come out since then too. Um, you got to think like a lot of stuff that Aaron started writing was around that time. You also have to think that there's a certain scene from Darth Maul. If you've watched our Darth Maul uh, video, if not, go to the plays, watch that. We tell you what kind of happens with a little bit of Obi one thing in there. That has come out since too. So you've also reduced the amount of timeline that you can actually use to have a storyline. I think originally they were planning on doing some like flashback, maybe throwing some Clone War stuff just all over the place. I've read some stuff. Like if you ever wrote, read the Collins uh, original, the one that they were going to do for nine, which was really good. Colin Trevorrow, the guy that originally wrote uh, the last episode before JJ decided to screw it up. Um, if you read that script or, and now I, there's like paywalls in front of it or you got parts of it. Really, it was kind of cool what they were doing there. Um, I think they got scared. And I think after doing Mando and after seeing how people do want the fill-in, mm -hmm. like part of the formula is make it cross. Don't worry about it. Give them – go ahead. What, what do we get right with Rogue One and where do we screw up with Han Solo, right? Well, yeah. people knew that was going to happen with Rogue One, but people still filled in there. So let's try to do it now. And let's use it as a platform to start inter to start bringing up other people. Because look, dude, that Rogue One, what other show are they doing? K2SO and uh, what's his name? Yeah, Cassie and Andor. Cassie and Andor. Like they're doing the Cassie and Andor story from that. Like, yeah. And that tells you something too. Like they, look, there's no geniuses in Hollywood. Right. Rinse, repeat, recycle. That's yeah. what they do there. And I think I agree with both of you. I think what's what you said, Solo, is they had that original material. They've handed it, they've, they've given it to these new creators, and they said, take it. And this is what I'm hoping, and I think this is what's happening. Take it, keep what you want, throw what you can, but bring in the other success factors that you've brought to Mando, Clone Wars, Rebels, Rogue One, right? It's like mix it all together and... Um, but I, I, but I agree. Um, this is kind of my last, my last point um, is I agree that they're they're going to use it to stretch it out into the future to create new stories with familiarity that they're they're not going to waste an opportunity to introduce new characters that new kids and new people see in Star Wars that they can use in future in the future. And I don't think it's just going to be. I don't think it's going to be flat out just. They, they'll probably introduce some other new characters into it too, but I don't think it's people that you're just going to be one-offs that you can, I think it's people that they want sustainability out of yes. and do have a little bit of a track record because yeah. remember you're giving, you're finishing off the storyline. We know almost the entire story. So what I think the movie was about to be too, was kind of a book that has come out now, which had to deal with Obi-Wan being trained when he was young. Um, I think that's originally what they were going to try to do the movie off of like pre Clone Wars, mm -hmm. visit Padawan, do some of that stuff, add in a little bit of backstory from uh, what's his name, Qui Gon Jinn, that type of thing, right? I think they're going to, which they could still do that, but they already did a novel off of it and they don't usually do that the whole thing. And by the way, if they do that, cool too, because that, there's some good stuff in there. But, you know, I think if they go this route, which is probably the more feasible option, 
Now, because how much more can you do off Qui Gon? Then you got to do the Qui Gon Dark, which you can do already, but you got to do him in the Dooku storyline because that plays in. You know, Dooku is there with Qui Gon. That plays into all that. Oh, we probably shouldn't get into all this because it's going to be going too we're far. But I, I think originally in the movie, like that's what you get because you get two hours. You could do a movie. You could reference a little bit. You'd have a cameo at the end where Dooku shows up or something to that effect. Oh, great. You know, there's our Easter egg because that's what you need in a movie, right? Mm -hmm. For a TV show, though, you need to keep building it. And by the way, um, you know, Disney Plus is going to keep needing new content over yes. and over. And yes. so now with the studios and how fast you can produce out some of this stuff, coming up with this kit, look, this is a, a, a hard costume to do if you're doing it the old way. If you're doing now the video game TV way, with the volume, yeah. But I think you're right, Marco. Like with a series, you could sprint. You could start the first three episodes or whatever, being a callback the past. Then the middle is current day, and they're not going to end this thing without a push towards the future. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean the future of Star Wars, but the future of the storytelling, the sustainability at Disney Plus. I think you. I think you could do. I think you could really do this. I think you could do a start out where you start out and you get into almost the dark, uh, the um, K guy, uh, the, the bounty hunter Wookiee. You get into that portion of it. Then you do the flashback where you get the, you bring in now Qui-Gon and you can bring in Dooku. So you give a little bit of familiarity back there and then you go forward and you do the, the hat thing and, or Darth crate. And, Oh, you got everything done. Look at that. 12 episodes. Ooh. Yes. I mean, that's wait. That's a lot of that's a lot of fanfare right there. That's a lot of like, cosmo figures. And, and again, a whole lot of new, perfect outline for what we want to see in Obi Wan. And, and and again, a whole lot of new avenues. Yeah, yes. that, you're right. Solo's right. It opens up so much. I yeah. mean, we can talk for another two hours on where those all could go, but until yep. they even start writing the script or get it complete, we probably shouldn't go that far down it because it just becomes fan fiction. Then at that point, <laughs> right. All right, Solo. I think it's your turn. to Take us out of here. All right, guys, go over there and uh, give us some love on that like and give us some love on that subscribe and give a big old force hug on that alarm so that you can be notified when all these handsome faces come to you this side of the galaxy. May the force be with you. Always. Always. Hey, make Always. sure you hit us up in the emails, too, if you guys have any questions or any comments or wants to cover something. Uh, yeah, that's it. We're always going to have the force with us. So you guys take it easy. See you guys.